Okay, so now we've got a walnut. This is another one. Yep, it has a Dobson tone ring. Um, ebony, uh, fretboard and fittings. That, that ebony is even more striking on this particular one than the yeah. rosewood. If you could see that, that striping in there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to to get it striped this striped this consistently. Um, but yeah, it definitely looks great. It's also on the back. Yeah. Well, this is a more of a, a straight black ebony on the back. I love the the inside of your uh, rims. How they yeah, are. they're pretty. <laughs> Well, not just that, the, the shape. I've just never seen that before. Yeah, this is a necessity is the mother of invention <laughs> sort of shape. Uh, but yeah, it works great. And, uh, it's some more of that beautiful walnut that came from Charlotte. And that's from that big piece of wood. Yeah, that giant piece of wood. And, um, calfskin of another. Yep, another calfskin head. This one is not dyed. That's what it looks like naturally. Okay. Sometimes they have different, they might have color oh, patches patterns. on them. Yeah. And then you can see some white streaks here and there. Yeah. And got another, that's a nice design. Yeah. Another little card detail. And I'm learning. That's a rosewood pink board, right? Nope. It's actually no. ebony. Guess what? I'm not learning. <laughs> <laughs> it looked reddish. Yeah. Okay. They do favor each other. It's hard to tell. Right. And then the peg head there. Yeah, if it's That's a, covered in walnut burl nice. on the front and the, the back. Yeah, looks little, like you got a design there too. A little detail there. Okay. I try to keep and the then, details subtle and you know not not too flashy. I really favor carving over inlay work. Hmm. Uh, there are a lot of people doing great inlay work already. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think of that. That the yeah. the, the uh, one or the other or I mean it doesn't have to be one or the other but that does seem to be the focus is the inlay yeah there's not a lot of people doing the carving exactly it's it's kind of I, I just prefer the carving personally right. well let's, you hear it? yeah I want to hear that one too I want to hear them all well this one has Nile gut strings I should start off saying there okay So everybody knows I've, I'm asking him to play all the same song. He knows more songs than Fly Around My Pretty Little Miss. <laughs> He's actually very good. Um, I just think it helps people get a good sound comparison. So let's take a look at another one. Okay, so we've got another. This is a cherry. Go ahead. Yep, it's cherry. has a thin brass tone ring. Just gives it a little more pop. Um, See, it has rose, yeah, rosewood on the the back of the rim and heel cap. Yeah, and that's striping again. Yeah, yeah like and the striping. keys are are all made out of ebony. Uh, different carving than the other, well, of course. Yeah, you yeah, you can see this one's got little songbirds on it. And stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, just something different. And they're also right here on the frailing scoop you can see two of them nice I guess they're talking to each other <laughs> and it has a just an old style figure eight headstock Let's see, get that glare out of there oh I'm sorry no, that's the sum okay nice that's better and it has walnut burl on the front and back and there's a chicken up there nice chicken that's <laughs> got some attitude <laughs> <laughs> That's very pretty. Thank you. And it has a brass position markers like the other ones. Um, and I don't know, beautiful cherry on the rim. And the yeah, neck, it's all out of the same tree. Right. Well, 
Here that clip. one. Yep. These are the minstrel strings. They're tuned to step and a half lower than normal, the standard pitch. <laughs> striped ebony um, on the fretboard and the rim ebony on the back and the heel cap I'm sitting here looking at this thinking how in the world did he transform what I saw out in that shed to this well you just carve away at it until it turns into a banjo you can <laughs> carve everything away that's not a banjo right <laughs> This one has kind of a wild gothic style carving. Uh, it's not as detailed as the other ones. It's just kind of wild and free. And, and the same on the headstock. Yeah, uh, nice. That's nice. Yeah. And it's uh, maple burl on the top. I was going to say, I just noticed that the, the actual wood itself mm -hmm. has got that. Yeah, a nice appearance. And this maple burl on the back, too. A mm, little, yes. little carved detail back there. There's some twining leaves, and um, and you can see the beautiful yeah, curly walnut. That the grain really pops on that one too. Oh, it's gorgeous. The, the so beautiful wood. This is the last banjo we're showing, but I I want to point out or ask, this does not have brackets like a lot of the banjos today, and I know historically this would be older, but yeah, it's kind of an older style. Some of the old English banjo makers use this type of design. Uh, not exactly, but the uh, same mechanics. It just has a, it utilizes a wooden tension hoop. Uh, these, you adjust it from these screw heads on top to, to tighten it or loosen the head, however you want to do. You can kind of see the screws through there. Right. This gap is the, the amount of adjustment you have to, to tighten it. And it works great. It works just as good as, as, a, as a metal hardware banjo, but you don't have all the the extra weight that was the the real the original reason I decided to to make these is because the they're so much lighter and, and you don't have all the hooks and the bolts poking into your legs and these if you have one of these at your home he'll you'll be grabbing it over the oh, other yeah. banjos just because of that it's lightweight and it's soft it feels good and of course it sounds great yeah, I actually like that. Um, and it's funny because when I first saw your website, that didn't even pop in my mind that it was missing that. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, and I think maybe because aesthetically it was, they're so pretty. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I realized, you know, historically that would be more traditional than, than the brackets, you know, because it would go farther back. You know, I mean, yeah. past after a gourd banjo, obviously... Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's it's kind of like taking the old traditional and making it. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like a tack head banjo, but you can adjust it. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, yeah. and and the other thing is it's it's got the the heirloom traditional look, mm -hmm. but it's got the function of a modern day banjo. Yeah, absolutely. Very very nice. Very functional. That's I couldn't be happier with this design. It works wonderfully. And these heads are, are really stable. They they will need some adjustment uh, as the seasons change. In humid seasons, you'll need to tighten it a little bit. But it's right. it's really no harder than tuning the the strings up. So it's not something to be scared of. Right, right. Well, can I hear this one? Sure.
almost like a guitar. You can you could probably get away with strumming it if you wanted to. The <laughs> the uh, so how long have you, have you been playing? Oh, uh, I guess since I was about twenty twenty one. So yeah, about twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, I can play more songs than fly around for yeah. three minutes. <laughs> I'll play another one. <laughs> Do another one for us. Okay. up the neck is that's as crystal clear as the as the yeah, lower bass that's one thing I failed to mention that this design it doesn't have all the weight of the, the metal hardware banjos so acoustically it really opens up the tone they speak equally all the notes as you go up the neck uh, other banjos you'll notice that they kind of drowned out sometimes in certain spots. Right. Uh, but these are, acoustically, these are wonderful from here to there. <laughs> yeah, that's. I did notice that when you were up the neck, because a lot of them, they do. They they tend to go out. Yeah, or they just they drowned get... out the, the tone. It gets sucked up. There's too much weight back here. Is that what it is? Yeah. The, it's the, the weight tone, of the metal? Yeah, it's trying to drive the the energy of the head is getting absorbed by that the extra weight. Right. That's just a basic acoustic principle. Not really rocket science there. Yeah, I bet you sit out here a lot. I do. I do more playing and looking out of the window than anything. <laughs> 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 well, you got to cut that out because I got a banjo on order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to show me your workshop and your playing and I'll let me try your instruments oh well i can't and, thank uh, you enough for coming down here and, and doing it and uh, really 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 nice of you and i'm, I'm glad that you uh, agree with me that they're they sound good and, oh yeah yeah I, like i said it's a it it was a wow moment from the time i picked it up well, good so, really glad so you have a would you say that's an ebony nut mm -hmm. and you have a bow nut yeah yeah they the bone is for steel strings, and the ebony are for the minstrel and the nile gut, or gut strings. Okay. So they they come off and they're not glued on there. Yeah, it's the tension of the string holding that on there. Exactly. Right? The nice. tension of the string holds them on there, and, and uh, yep, they stay in place really well. see how to tie it. Sure. Just make a loop. Just like that. Then take the other end of the string. Stick it through there. And you see this big part, that's the this is what you hang on the post. And then when you pull it it tightens the knot up. Yeah it's kind of twisting up Using, but that's what you put on the post. See here, and then pull it up and pull the knot tight. You can do a single or a double knot. I think either one stays.
So I mentioned this out in your workshop, but I have never seen a rim design that's it's almost bowl shaped on the inside. And I was just wondering where that came from or why you do that. Well, it's it's just a it's just an original design. I I wanted to do that to make it uh, as lightweight as possible and to accommodate the tensioning system. So it's it's just sort of a, a combination of things that, that brought it into being. But I, I haven't seen it before. So as far as I know, I'm the first one that, that's created this. So the rims that we saw out there that were solid, you, you carved that or you shaped that? Yes. Out so it's it's got that. Does that make any difference on the sound? Oh, sure. Yeah, eliminating as much weight as possible is, is key to making a, a good banjo. But but about the, the shape itself, does that? The shape itself. In other words, if it was inverted, well, you couldn't invert it because of the tension hoop, but I just didn't know if the bowl shape did anything other than thinning it out, and that's just the design that you That's used. the purpose, to thin it out and to accommodate the, uh, the wedge to hold it in place, to hold the neck in place. Okay. Um, it's just a very simple but effective design with the uh, with the screws that go down into to uh, threaded inserts in the rim. So as you adjust this over the years, it's metal to metal threads. You understand? It'll and never. It's not going into wood. It's okay. not going to wear out. Yeah, that's. See, that's that's what I think is. It goes back to what you were saying about the uh, function and how it how it works. The back of that is a really cool thing as far as thinning it out. Yeah, it looks great. But it looks great. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful, just the whole shape, and of course the contrast in the woods there. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So when I'm looking at the neck and your finish on these instruments, they don't look like a lot of things that I've seen on other instruments. It, they don't look have that plastic finish. Yeah. What's the difference? Like, what are you doing? Well, it's, I make the finish from scratch uh, using natural resins, and uh, it's just something that I've learned from, from working with uh, restoring antique furniture. So this isn't store-bought stuff that you don't go to the Walmart oh, no. and buy stuff? Absolutely not. This is all made from natural resins. The, uh, the, the actual varnish itself is just made from shellac and sandarac resins, and there's a couple other trade secrets involved in, in everything else. But beyond the, the trade secrets, the, the secret of any maker is the maker himself. It's, it's not the materials or the technique uh, or, or the construction of whatever. It's, all, it's about the maker. And that's something that I really became aware of from, from years of building and restoring violins. People would always say, oh, the Stradivarius, you know, he had all these secrets, and he did, but they were, the secret was, it was him. Of course, I'm not comparing myself to such lofty heights as Stradivarius <laughs> as a banjo maker, but just to, to make the point that that the, um, the magic of the instrument comes from the maker uh, more so than, than any, any particular way he does it. Right, I, and I agree with you. I, I, when when I came in, I had asked you about, do you have any trade secrets? And you said you were willing to share because somebody could try to duplicate this, and they could duplicate it, but it would not be your instrument. It wouldn't have the quality. It wouldn't have the sound. And that really impressed me, you know, because a lot of guys are, you know, hush hush about everything they're doing. Yeah. But you being willing to share is kind of evidence that. It really isn't the technique. Um, it's it's what it's the hands of the builder. It's the mind of the builder and what he puts into it. That's exactly right. Yeah. If if I built this, it would look like a twelve year old did it. <laughs> <laughs> but even if an experienced woodworker did it, it wouldn't it would not look like this. And again, I, you know, I've said this, I don't know how many times, but just looking at these instruments, it's like looking at a antique piece of furniture that's that was built you know like in the 1800s when people actually cared exactly and and put the the effort and the work into it it's just just gorgeous stuff. Just gorgeous.